Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar, the first in a series intended to help nursing homes improve care by reducing hospital admissions. My name is Christy Wergeen and I am representing Lake Superior Quality Innovation Network or Lake Superior Quinn. Lake Superior Quinn represents Michigan, Minnesota, and Wisconsin under the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services Quality Improvement Organization program. During this introductory webinar, I will be sharing information about the impact of hospitalizations on nursing home residents, as well as incentive, incentives for skilled nursing facilities to reduce their rates of hospitalizations. The National Nursing Home Quality Care Collaborative uses this change package as a reference to identify great ideas and practices from high-performing nursing homes to create lasting change. Please refer to the link on this slide to access this change package. You will note that in Strategy 6, provide exceptional compassionate clinical care that treats the whole person, there are action items specific to the transitions of care between shifts, departments, and all care settings. Skilled nursing facilities, or SNFs, represent the most common setting for post-acute care in the United States. Rates of readmissions from SNFs are high and grew by a rate of 29% over the 2000 to 2006 time period. One in four patients discharged from a hospital to a SNF is readmitted within 30 days. Hospital readmissions are also expensive. In 2006, hospital readmissions from a SNF cost Medicare $4.34 billion. Although certain SNF rehospitalizations are unavoidable, research suggests that a high proportion occur for conditions that potentially could be managed within the SNF. Specifically, MedPAC has found that five conditions, congestive heart failure, respiratory infection, urinary tract infection, sepsis, and electrolyte imbalance, for which rehospitalization is potentially avoidable, account for 78% of all 30-day SNF rehospitalizations. Hospitalizations have many effects on the quality of life and well-being of the elderly. In the hospital, restricted mobility, undernutrition, overuse of continence devices, and polypharm polypharmacy often lead to functional decline. Restricted mobility is often related to bed rest orders, limited access to bedside chairs, high beds, and the use of restraints which include intravenous poles and urinary catheters. In-hospital undernutrition and malnutrition is often a result of prolonged periods of orders restricting oral food intake, a diet not consistent with patient preferences, and the lack of access to food and fluids. Continence has been described as an important contributor to functional outcomes. One of the reasons for the high rates of hospital acquired incontinence is the extensive use of specialized devices for frail, confused, or immobile patients such as adult diapers and urinary catheters. Sometimes it is easier or more feasible to offer temporary devices rather than to exert effort on conservative and behavioral interventions such as habitual voiding strategies. The use of devices has been linked to negative outcomes such as pressure injury, recurrent urinary tract infections, depression, and functional dependency. Polypharmacy is common in older people. Although the purpose of drug therapy is therapeutic, medications are frequently associated with adverse outcomes such as falls. Adverse outcomes related to medications occur two and a half times more frequently in the elderly than in patients under the age of 65. Psychoactive drugs may be given to encourage sleep and sedation, 
despite the known possible adverse effects of these drugs on the elderly as they increase the risk for falling, injury, and delirium. Benzodiazepine use has also been shown to affect post-hospitalization outcomes, and residents who are started on these drugs in the hospital are more likely to continue using them long term. In the hospital, environmental factors can also lead to functional decline. The physical hospital environment is often not safe for the elderly and tends to be a noisy, sensory, and socially deprived and disoriented environment. These environmental factors discourage mobility, exacerbate disorientation, disrupt sleep, lead to social isolation, and increase the likelihood of falls. In addition, hospitalized nursing home residents may be subjected to many tests which may, for example, result in being inappropriately treated for asymptomatic bacteria in the urine. The impact of hospital admissions on nursing home residents is significant. The impact of hospital readmissions has also become quite significant for the nursing home. Reducing hospital admissions and readmissions are now incentivized via the SNF value-based purchasing program the SNF Quality Reporting Program, and the Nursing Home Five Star Rating System. These incentive programs were developed to promote better clinical outcomes for skilled nursing facility residents and reduce costs. First, I will review the SNF Value-Based Purchasing Program, or SNF VBP. The Skilled Nursing Facility Value-Based Purchasing Program offers Medicare incentive payments to SNFs paid under the SNF Prospective Payment System, or PPS, based on their performance on specified measures of readmissions. To fund the incentive payment pool, CMS will withhold 2% of SNF Medicare payments starting October 1, 2018. This program aims to protect residents from potential harms or adverse events associated with hospital readmissions. It builds on previous quality improvement efforts in the skilled nursing facility sector and other Medicare VBP programs. In this program, which is included in the Protecting Access to Medicare Act of 2014, CMS will pay participating skilled nursing facilities for their services based on the quality of care, not just the quantity of the services they provide in a given performance period. This program establishes a hospital readmissions reduction program for providers, encouraging SNFs to address potentially avoidable readmissions by establishing an incentive pool for high performers. Based on the SNF readmission measure, a performance standard has been established along with the levels of achievement and improvement, a scoring methodology that ranks each SNF from low to high. SNFs with the highest rankings receive the highest incentive payments, and SNFs with the lowest rankings receive the lowest or zero incentive payments. The lowest 40% of SNFs by the ranking will be reimbursed less than they otherwise would be reimbursed without the SNF value-based program. CML, CMS will redistribute 50 to 70 percent of the withheld payments back to providers by way of incentive payments, and CMS will retain the remaining 30 to 50 percent of funds as programmatic savings to Medicare. The performance data for your SNF for the baseline year, which is calendar year 2015, can be accessed using the link on this slide. Individual SNF measure performance rate information found on this document is based on SNF performance on the Skilled Nursing Facility 30-Day All-Cause Readmission Measure, which I will discuss next. The SNF 
30-day all-cause readmission measure, or SNF-RM, estimates risk standardized rate of all-cause unplanned hospital readmissions of Medicare SNF beneficiaries within 30 days of discharge from their prior proximal acute hospitalization. <clears throat> Important things to remember about this measure are residents with Medicare fee-for-service insurance are included, but residents with Medicare Advantage insurance are not included. Low readmission rates are better. Hospital readmissions are identified through Medicare claims. And readmissions within the 30-day window are counted regardless of whether the beneficiary is readmitted to the hospital directly from the SNF or has been discharged from the SNF. For example, discharged to home and the re then readmitted within 30 days of the hospital discharge. This measure, measure is risk adjusted based on patient demographics, principal diagnosis in prior hospitalization, comorbidities, and other health status variables that affect the probability of readmission. Exclusions from this measure include planned readmissions, since these are not indicative of poor quality care, an intervening post-acute care stay, more than a one-day gap from hospital discharge to admission to a skilled nursing facility, and the resident not being enrolled in Medicare fee-for-service for a full year before the hospital stay. Other exclusions include discharge from the SNF against medical advice, prior hospitalization for medical treatment of cancer, prior hospitalization for rehabilitation care, and not being enrolled in Medicare fee-for-service for the month of the prior proximal hospitalization and the one month after the hospitalization. SNFs will be awarded points for achievement on a 0 to 100 score and points for improvement on a 0 to 90 point scale based on how their performance compares to national benchmarks and thresholds. The SNFs will earn a SNF VBP performance score, again 0 to 100, which is equal to the higher of the achievement score and improvement score. It is calculated based on that SNF's performance on the measure specified for the program during the performance period and the baseline period. Here are a few more details regarding the SNF VBP achievement score. For this first year of the program, the performance period is calendar year 2017 and the baseline period is calendar year 2015. If your nursing home's rate is better or equal to the benchmark, your home will receive 100 points. If your nursing home's rate is worse than achievement threshold, your home will receive 0 points. In between, 1 to 99 points will be awarded according to a formula that is described in the final rule. Here are more details regarding the SNF VBP improvement score. Points are awarded by comparing your nursing home's rate during the performance period, again that's calendar year 2017, with its previous performance during the baseline period, which is calendar year 2015. If your rate in 2017 is worse than the improvement threshold, your nursing home will receive zero points. If your rate is between the thresholds, your nursing home will receive 1 to 89 points awarded according to the formula described in the final rule. So your SNF VBP performance score then becomes the higher of the achievement and improvement scores. The SNF v VBP program starts with fiscal year 2019 payment. So, beginning October 1, 2018, eligible SNFs will be awarded value-based incentive payments for the quality of care they give to people with Medicare. 
For each year that the SNF VBP program affects payment determination, SNFs are scored based on their performance during the applicable baseline period and performance period. The baseline period affecting payment determination in fiscal year 2019 is calendar year 2015, which is January 1, 2015 through December 31, 2015. The performance period affecting payment determination in fiscal year 2019 is calendar year 2017. Again, that's January 1, 2017 through December 31, 2017. This slide also includes the performance and baseline periods for fiscal year 2020 program. This slide includes milestones for the SNF VBP program for calendar year 2018. These are the steps leading up to the first incentive payment, which will be paid to the SNFs in October 2018. One of the SNF VBP requirements is that the program includes confidential and public reporting. Public reporting of the SNF 30-Day All-Cause Readmission Measure, or SNF RM, was made public on Nursing Home Compare in October 2017. In addition to the public reporting of the SNF 30-Day All-Cause Readmission Measure on Nursing Home Compare, after August 1, 2018, SNF performance rankings that include rank, provider ID, facility name, facility address, baseline period, performance period, improvement score, and performance score will also be publicly reported on Nursing Home Compare. The next program I will discuss is the Skilled Nursing Facility Quality Reporting Program, or SNF QRP. On September 18, 2014, Congress passed the Improving Medicare Post-Acute Care Transformation Act of 2014, or the IMPACT Act. This act requires the submission of standardized data by long-term care hospitals, skilled nursing facilities, home health agencies, and inpatient rehabilitation facilities. It was this act that established a Quality Reporting Program, or QRP, for SNFs. The Impact Act of 2014 requires specified clinical assessment domains using standardized data elements to be nested within the assessment in instruments currently required for submission by long-term care hospitals, inpatient rehab facilities, skilled nursing facilities, and home health agencies. The Act further requires that CMS develop and implement quality measures from five quality measure domains using standardized assessment data. In addition, the Act requires the development and reporting of measures pertaining to resource use, hospitalization, and discharge to the community. Through the use of standardized quality measures and standardized data, the intent of the Act, among other obligations, is to enable interoperability and access to longitudinal information for such providers to facilitate coordinated care, improve outcomes, and overall quality comparisons. The SNF Quality Reporting Program that was born of the IMPACT Act became effective on October 1, 2016. Beginning with the fiscal year 2018 payment determination, SNFs that do not submit the required quality measure data may receive a 2% reduction to the annual payment update for the applicable payment year. For this program, Currently, it is the submission of quality data, not the performance on the quality measures, that determines compliance. However, this may change over time. On this slide are the SNF Quality Reporting Program assessment-based measures. These data are obtained from the MDS. 
On this slide are the SNF QRP claims-based measures. One of these measures is the potentially preventable 30-day post-discharge readmission measure. The SNF QRP potentially preventable 30-day post-discharge readmission measure is not identical to the SNF VBP readmission measure. Important things to remember about this measure are that the measure is the SNF's risk-adjusted rate of unplanned, potentially preventable hospital readmissions within 30 days of SNF discharge, and that might be discharge to home or assisted living, another SNF, just anywhere the resident would go. It uses Medicare eligibility files and inpatient claims data. It does not include those with Medicare Advantage, and public reporting started in April 2016. Exclusions for the SNF QRP measure include residents transferred at the end of a stay to another SNF inpatient rehab facility, long-term care hospital, or short-term acute care hospital, resident discharged against medical advice, residents for whom the prior short-term acute care stay was for non-surgical treatment of cancer, and planned readmissions. The last nursing home incentive to reduce hospitalizations I will be discussing is the publicly reported nursing home compare quality measures. Since April 2016, CMS has been publishing the percentage of short stay residents who were rehospitalized after a nursing home admission on Nursing Home Compare. The public is able to view the short stay readmission rates for each nursing home as well as state and national benchmarks. In October 2018, CMS will begin posting rates of hospitalization for long-stay residents to the Nursing Home Compare website. Starting in July 2018, nursing homes have been given the opportunity to see their data in the Nursing Home Compare five-star ratings of Nursing Homes Provider Rating Report. In the spring of 2019, this long-stay quality measure will be included in the five-star quality rating system. Having the short and long-stay readmission measures publicly available has implications not only for the public, who may be reviewing the quality measures prior to admitting a loved one to a nursing home, but also for hospitals, who may be using this information to determine which nursing homes to transfer their patients. This webinar has been a review of the motivations regarding the current focus to prevent avoidable hospitalizations. Please join the Lake Superior Quinn in the next webinar in this series that will be held on August 24th. In this live webinar, you will hear about how to reduce hospitalizations using QAPI principles. Then, we hope you will look forward to hearing from your nursing home peers as they share strategies they have used to reduce hospitalizations on August 30th, September 11th, and September 20th. Please use the link on this slide for more information including how to register for these events. We appreciate all of your efforts to improve the quality of care and the quality of life of those living in your nursing homes. If you have questions about this webinar or about the National Nursing Home Quality Care Collaborative, please refer to this slide for the contact information for the lead from your state. Thank you for listening.